So uh, welcome to numerical methods. What I would like to do now is have another look on the acceptance rejection method and plug it into our application, Monte Carlo approximation. And you will immediately see that acceptance rejection sampling for a Monte Carlo approximation is maybe not a good idea and there is a more efficient alternative. And the funny thing is that this alternative will lead now to the weighted Monte Carlo method. Yeah, let's have a look. So we started from the question how to generate a sequence of a given distribution and the acceptance rejection method looks somewhat inefficient when the acceptance rate is low because then we just throw away points. When we look now at the Monte Carlo method, actually we see that maybe we do not need to throw away the point. So consider the case that we like to calculate the expectation of a random variable x plugged into some function h, yeah, where the x is generated by the acceptance rejection sampling. Yeah, what does this mean? If you do now the Monte Carlo approximation, so I have now Monte Carlo approximation of this guy, no? then this means I calculate one divided by n, take the sum over all h of xi, and xi is generated by acceptance rejection. I can then just replace the h of xi with my h of yj. So from the sequence that was used in acceptance rejection, I use all the points and just multiply with the indicator of my acceptance criteria. Because the indicator of my acceptance criteria, this guy is zero if the point is reje rejected. So in the sum, I just sum up the zero. So it wouldn't do harm to replace in the sum the h of xi by the h of yj and then take all the guys. Of course, then you have to sum over all the points in the sequence y. So I have to sum over m, m much larger than n. Yeah? m is the number of sample points that we have tried n is the number of sample points that I would like to have taken out of the sequence yeah, by accepting. Yeah? n is the number of points that have been accepted. m is the number of points that have been accepted plus the one rejected. So the criteria that in my acceptance rejection method is that the sum over these indicators here, so how many points do I have accepted? This is just equal to the n in my Monte Carlo sum. So you see that you can replace your Monte Carlo sum by yeah, your Monte Carlo sum one divided by n, sum over all h xi, xi used acceptance rejection, by one divided by how many points did we accept? multiply with the sum over all h of yj, but multiplied with the indicator function of the acceptance criteria. So we did not do anything wrong. Actually, the last line is much more inefficient because we are counting how many points have we accepted instead of just having a criteria stop when you have accepted n points. And I sum up, well, a lot of time, I sum up zero. Yeah? H times the indicator when I reject is sum up zero. So this is what would happen if you combine Monte Carlo integral and acceptance rejection. Maybe I can rewrite this a little bit. So let now AR of U and Y denote my acceptance indicator. Yeah? So this is my acceptance indicator. Then I can calculate the acceptance rate for a given y. So for a given y, 
how often would I accept the point? Yeah, so this is the exp expectation of my indicator for a fixed y over all possible values u. Yeah, so this is the integral yeah, of a r u of y multiplied with the density of u, but u is uniform, the density is one, so just one du. And if you now plug in the indicator, you see that this is just our f of y divided by c times g of y. Yeah. So you integrate from zero to one, yeah, the indicator. So this is just the upper bound where u is equal to f of y divided by c times g of y. So there is an interpretation of this quantity here. This quantity is in this picture that we had that we had for the acceptance rejection method. This quantity is exactly the length of this interval. Yeah? This function that you see there is the f divided by c times g. So this is the proportion of the points that you accept, while this here is the proportion of the points that you reject. Okay. If you calculate the expectation over all R of Y, yeah, then you know you just get the one divided by C. Okay, we had this in the proof of the acceptance rejection method. Yeah, Y has density G. So this is integrate R Y, G of Y dy plug in the R of Y, which you have calculated from above. Yeah? This is your F of Y divided by C times G of Y. The G cancels. Then you have one divided by C integrate over the density F, integrating the density is just one. So coming back to my little complicated rewriting of the Monte Carlo integral, the Monte Carlo integral is count how many points have you accepted? Sum up over all h evaluated on the sequence y, uh, like if as if you would accept all the points, but multiply this h of y with the indicator if the point was rejected. So I can now just replace yeah, here my indicator. Um, with the proportion of the points that I accept. So on top it is as if you have h of y and sometimes you take the point, sometimes you don't take the point. So, but instead you can just say, I already know that I take the point in 80% of the cases. So you could just say, take h of y, i, in 80% the cases, you can just replace this with the R of YI, yeah? the proportion of points that you accept. So instead of using there the indicators, we may just use the weights, how often do we accept the point? And of course, and then divide here by the weights. So how many points have we accepted in in average. Yeah, so maybe this second step here that I replace the sum over the indicators by the sum over the Rs is a little bit uh, strange, yeah, but note that one divided by K yeah, of uh, over these indicators converges to R of Y. Yeah? So a little bit I'm replacing this indicator with the limit because the sum over these indicators is a Monte Carlo approximation of the R of y's. So this expression number nine here will also converge to the expectation of h of x. Okay, so why is this? Yeah, let's con consider this uh, y here, the, this um, sum. So what I do now is I take all the points from my sequence y, which is not having the distribution of the random variable x. Yeah? It's the 
other sequence in the acceptance rejection method. And I now multiply this with the percentage of points that are accepted. So with the weight corresponding to the percentage of points that are accepted. And I divide by the sum over these you know, acceptance uh, rates. So plugging in the expression for the R of Y, so I plug in that I already know this is F of Y divided by C times G of Y, and here below I have the sum over these guys. You see that you can cancel the C, and you can also just write this with some weight. So I have a weight W here, and I divide by a sum of these Ws, and the weight W is just the ratio of the densities. So this is what, what you actually do in acceptance rejection when you plug in acceptance rejection in the Monte Carlo method. And now have a look what is happening here. So what you see there, if you now observe that you can add a one divided by N on both sides, yeah, you can add a factor of one divided by N here and one divided by N here. So you see that one divided by N, the sum over W is actually the exp uh, Monte Carlo approximation of the expectation of W of Y. So you have that one divided by N sum over W is the Monte Carlo expectation uh, approximation of expectation of W of Y. And W of Y, if you have a look at what is actually the Y, this, the, the W, the W is F divided by G, but the Y is G distributed. So calculating the expectation means that I integrate with respect to the density of Y, dy. The G is canceling, integral over F is one. So these weights are now yeah, not like in acceptance rejection always below one because I have removed the C. These weights are sometimes larger than one, sometimes smaller than one. So I have that these weights are amplifying a few points and yeah, in exchange dampening a few other points. Okay, so if the expectation of W of Y converges to one, and if you have added here this factor of one divided by N in front of the two sums, then actually the factor in front, one divided by one divided by N, the sum over all Ws, this converges to one. So you can also just look at this right-hand part one divided by N, the sum over H of Y times W of Y. Yeah, and what is this? This is a Monte Carlo approximation of the function H times W evaluated at Y. So this is actually the expectation of H of Y times W of Y. Yeah, plug in that Y is G distributed. So this is integrate H of Y times W of Y with respect to the density G dy. And now plug in the definition of the W. So the definition of the W is F divided by G. So the G is canceling, and you actually have that this is H of Y multiplied with F of Y dy. So this is just expectation of H of X. So you see that we have exactly what we did in the start. We, what we wanted to have expectation H of X. X was sampled with acceptance rejection, but this led now to the interpretation that we evaluate H at some other sequence, uh, 
and correct for the change in the sequence by multiplying with, with a weight. And this is now a method that is very nice, very general, because we can use it with any other density G. Yeah? So I would like to calculate expectation H of X. X is having density F, but I would like to use a different sequence, a different sequence that has distribution function capital G, where I know the density, and I just need to re in my Monte Carlo, my Monte Carlo sum. So this is the weighted Monte Carlo approximation. So we define the weight W as F divided by G. F is the density of X. G is the density of Y. I have a small condition. There is the condition if G is equal to zero, F is also equal to zero. Uh, so if G at of, uh, of Y is equal to zero, then F of Y is also equal to zero. So why is this condition necessary? Well, I sample now points YI, yeah? and I evaluate the function H. So this means if the point Y is impossible, so will never occur, I will miss it here in this expression. Then it also has to be impossible, will never occur in the original sequence. Yeah. So in my H of XI. So otherwise the method yeah, would not work. Um, this condition corresponds to the condition in the acceptance rejection method that there exists the constant such that F is less or equal C times G. Yeah? Because if G is zero, the F then has to be zero. Okay, and this condition has a natural um, interpretation. Yeah, So impossible points in my new sequence have to correspond to impossible points, Yeah, points with probability zero in the original sequence. So this weight W is sometimes called likelihood ratio, or this is very similar to the likelihood ratio method. Yeah, let's have um, a small interpretation. So this Monte Carlo integral, using a sequence that is generated with acceptance rejection, this can be interpreted as an integral in say two or uh, one dimension. What are you calculating? You're calculating expectation of H of Y, conditional that you accept the point Okay, so conditional expectation is the unconditional expectation divided by the expectation of the condition. So this is expectation of H of Y yeah, multiplied with the indicator function that I accept the point divided by the expectation of acceptance. You already know that here below the expectation of this acceptance, this guy here is a one divided by C, yeah, so you get actually a C just in front of this, and you have expectation of H of Y times AR, yeah, the acceptance indicator of the pair U and Y. So this is a two-dimensional integral. If you plug in the inversion of the distribution function, you have a G inverse of V here, you have a G inverse of V here inside, and you integrate now over the two dimensional uniforms. That is what our sampling did. But you already know that yeah, integrating over U, yeah, observe that the U only occurs in the condition. You already know that integrating over the condition is the acceptance rate. So this will then boil down here to the R. Yeah? the probability that you accept. And that was what I did for the weighted Monte Carlo. Yeah, so this, this is the integral over G over H of Y multiplied with this weight. Okay, so this guy here uh, is the sequence that we use and this is the becoming the, the weight which corresponds to C times the 
acceptance rate. Yeah? So this corresponds here to the weight. And you see that this last expression is just the expectation of h of y times w of y. Yeah, okay. So this here is just a kind of motivation. So you see that using acceptance rejection with a Monte Carlo sum, there is actually something you could do instead of throwing away the point, you could just take the sequence y and just account for the probability that you throw the point away. And this is far more efficient, yeah, because you don't throw the point away sometimes, you just multiply with the weight that corresponds to the probability uh, that you have accepted the point. So this method is a very general method. It's called weighted Monte Carlo. And I just want to give here a definition and a name. And it's also very much associated or related to importance sampling. So a Monte Carlo approximation using general weights W, yeah, this is used weighted, this is called weighted Monte Carlo approximation. And you may use this method, this trick, to achieve several things. Though the first thing is that, okay, look here, this is H of Y multiplied with a W of omega Y. You could consider this as an improvement of expectation of Y. So for example, yeah, you know that the expectation of y uh, has some analytic value and you can correct for a Monte Carlo error because you already know that the expectation of y has some analytic value. Yeah, you can do some, some moment matching. So that's the thing you improve the approximation of expectation of h of y. Yeah? For example, when knowing expectation of y um, analytically, or for example, you can reduce the variance, you know the Monte Carlo um, error of your Monte Carlo sum depends on the variance of h of y. Yeah, so maybe you know some weights yeah, that reduce the variance. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you know the analytic solution of expectation of h of y, maybe you uh, can completely remove the variance, but maybe you only know it approximately. So this is improving the, or reducing the Monte Carlo approximation error. This is called variance reduction. I have a separate session on variance reduction on control variance. So that's one application where you can use these weights. What we did was we used the weights to actually correct for a difference in the probability distribution of y because we didn't want to calculate expectation h of y we wanted to, to calculate expectation h of x yeah so the weight here is actually correcting the distribution yeah so we have target distribution f but we used in the expression the y so you see here it's h of y of omega i and the weight corrects this such that we are actually approximating expectation h of x. So this procedure is then sometimes also called importance sampling. So why is it now called importance sampling? Yeah, importance sampling is that you have two random variables. You have x and you have y. And you assume that you know the densities of the two, phi of x and phi of y. Then you know that the expectation h of x is integrating with respect to the density phi x. The expectation h of y is integrating with the density, with respect to the density phi y. If you now have the condition that h times phi y is zero, implies that h times phi x is zero. So this again corresponds to the fact that values y, which are 
say impossible or say for which h times phi has no value are also impossible if you integrate with respect to x then you can define this general weight here and you can calculate the expectation of h of x by actually calculating the expectation of h of y times w of y. Huh? So same trick, yeah? expectation h of x is h times phi x, but now I can write phi x as w times phi y, and you can now reinterpret this in two ways. Either you are integrating this function with respect to this density, or you are integrating this function with respect to w times phi y, the density phi of x. So this is just a different interpretation that you split the function at a different point, and the other point is then inter interpreted as part of the density. So you can approximate the h of x with taking another random variable y and correcting with this weight. And the idea behind this is that maybe the function h looks like this. Yeah. So it's zero here. And maybe then it has some variance, some, some value there. And if this is the function and you would have a density x of x that looks like this, you are actually having in your Monte Carlo sum many, many points. Yeah, So you have many points that lie in this region where the function is zero. So you are just very often summing up zero. So you are missing a little bit the important area because the important area is where the function is not zero. Summing up zero in a Monte Carlo integral is just, you can just multiply with some weight, yeah? And the remainder is just one minus the weight times zero. So this means I shift now the distribution of my sequence to the important part. Yeah? So I shift my sequence to the important region of H so I use a different sequence sampling a different region where H has more variability, yeah, more where more more is going on. Of course, then I have to correct my Monte Carlo sum with the ratio. How likely is it that I am in this re region? And this is just the ratio phi yeah, of x divided by phi of y. Yeah? So if phi of x is small in this region, I multiply with a small weight, but I multiply a value that is different from zero. Yeah, this is important sampling. The other application I have mentioned is variance reduction, and we have a separate session on variance reduction when we look at control variance. So that was it uh, for today. So the next topic is now Monte Carlo simulation of time discrete stochastic processes. So we will move from random variables now to stochastic processes. So a time parameter will generate a family of random variables. And this is a very short session. And after that, we will discuss how are we discretizing time continuous stochastic processes into uh, discrete time discrete stochastic processes such that we can combine the two methods and have Monte Carlo simulations of time continuous stochastic processes. Huh? Time discretization plus Monte Carlo simulation. That was it for today. Thanks. <laughs>